Yeah, we get to relive this a little bit. This amazing fight. Do it! <laughs> Lighting and fire. And amazing sound effects. That sound design, though. So good. So satisfying. You should have been taking care of your sister. What's wrong with you, jerk? You're so pathetic, etc. I have a very strong feeling backstory is coming. <laughs> backstory is coming, not that I necessarily want it. It's unbelievable how deep that slash is to his chest. Did he also move all of his organs? Neutralizing Demon Flame? There you go! See, everyone plays a role in the final moments. <laughs> Excellent. Top-notch action. So satisfying. That wrapped that up nicely. And now we can just chill, right? We can just chill for this epilogue? That'd be great. Episode 11. No matter how many lives. Don't touch that. There are like eight ways Tanjiro could die right now. Your flashbacks, if they were flashbacks, saved me. But it was not enough to save entertainment. Eesh, the fingers. That is a great question. <laughs> a lot of people are wondering that, I'm sure. Alright, that's two. I mean, this is just his normal state, screaming in pain and crying, so this is a good sign. Right. Even if he did move his heart. I was thinking about that too, but yeah. If she's not close. Neutralizing flame! Well, that's settled that. <laughs> that is a huge relief. Nezuko just suddenly became so crucial with her unbelievable powers. Nezuko? Surely he'll be okay too, right? Save your energy. I'm with her. Don't let him say his last words. Alright, this is okay. This is a good sign. This is levity. They wouldn't put this levity in with a death scene, right? You can't die. You can't... Why would you leave this behind? There she is! It's good. It's all good. Somehow we all survived that. Well, that solves the poison, but what about these gaping... <laughs> Wounds that they have! Like, Inusuke's- okay, never mind. They can walk it off. Inusuke has a hole in his chest, bigger than Rogoku's. Tanjiro is in two pieces, but <laughs> all, all, the, all is well that ends well. It's because of their grit. It seems to be a very wide-reaching demon power neutralizer. That is actually a great idea, <laughs> given the history of the show and them just not dying ever. Did you just skip a rock over their- a pool of their blood? That is a great sample. Yeah, I totally forgot about that mission, too. And, oh yeah, Ghost Cat! Long time to see. Their heads really got launched, huh? Oh, are they arguing with their last moments? Yeah, he was holding Tanjiro for that same thing. They're just absolutely miserable to the end. Oh! Ooh, it all comes out. No lies were told. It's interesting thinking about this as the parallel that it's been stated as being, basically, of Tanjiro and Nezuko. I'm not 100% clear on exactly what it is, but there's something ideologically being contrasted between the two pairs of siblings. There are two things that stand out to me. One is Daka's speech about how the world is sort of cruel or this kind of zero-sum game, and so it's your job to take what you can get because you're kind of owed it, kind of leading into resentment, versus what Nezuko said in, I think it was a flashback, or maybe it was just sort of an inner vision that Tanjiro had, where she's talking about how Tanjiro perhaps was flirting with similar sentiments about blaming his father or feeling inadequate or being resentful of the world for looking down on his family for being poor. But in that, she encouraged him to be responsible for his own happiness and that it's his responsibility to fight and move forward rather than, than blaming the world. And the very different ways the two sets of siblings turned out might be a, a statement on the effects of that. What happens to you if you carry out those two underlying philosophies for long enough? Tanjiro, and I guess Nezuko as well, are in a sense symbols of maximum responsibility. There is no blame at all coming from Tanjiro. He's the opposite of that to a fault right like everything is on his shoulders and while that is definitely a burden and maybe not the healthiest thing at that extreme it frees him up in a way where he is not resentful and he seems to be more just grateful thinking predominantly about what he can do in any given moment whereas the demons have kind of sunk all the way into misery to the point where even now in their final moments when they could be reconciling or saying farewells they're at each other's throats or they would be if they had them left and I didn't even notice this while watching last time I noticed it while editing when Tanjiro deals the final blow I think it is his scar becomes part of his energy that he uses to defeat the demon I think that's what happened. And I don't remember if we've gotten the origin of the scar, but it's conceivable 
that the scar represented some kind of negative event in his life that he was carrying that he took and used as energy, simultaneously letting it go and moving forward and doing good with it. Although the scar thing could be totally unrelated, I don't know. Thinking about it now, I think what the sister said to the brother is also relevant, talking about how he's nothing without power. He's nothing if he can't win. Because that's sort of how they frame their lives. It's all about obtaining a victory. There's this gaping hole in their internal ecosystem that lacks any kind of responsibility or empathy or deeper understanding of what life is and what can be found in life by kind of accepting the harsh, harsh truths and doing your best to make things better better anyway. And so they have just spiraled down into bitterness. And I think that is a really great way of conceptualizing one of the big trade-offs of life that just keeps coming up again and again on the channel, where you sort of can't have it both ways. You want the ultimate sweetness of life and you want to have a great arc like some of these characters and feel realized and feel connected with yourself and the world. Well, you're gonna have to pay a price for that. And that price is giving up things that are seductively easy and don't require you to look into the darkness and do really difficult work to recognize that the darkness that you hate about the world exists in yourself. And only by facing that and only by coming to terms with it and being resolute in in the desire to overcome it. Can anything really great happen for you? But more broadly, that is sort of the, the winning system whereby if people were to adopt it, there would be less of the misery caused by circumstance because then there would be fewer people leaning into the same darkness that everyone knows to be terrible. <laughs> is Andrew gonna take responsibility for this too? <laughs> of course he is. Shut your damn mouth. You barely even have that. <laughs> だから攻めて to send them off in the last moment of peace. Very noble. Why is his strength so unwavering? Probably one of the sour ones. And... Backstory. Right, right. They're very envious of... Blood more than them. And here we go. Time to learn about how bad they had it, making you feel stupid for hating them so much. Ugh. What? Did, what? Trying to kill him with a 8,000 blows? And of course, yeah, kids throw rocks at him. Yeah, well, everything's so glamorous. Exactly. Up to this point, I don't think it's terrible. I mean, whatever gets you out of that hell, right? Maybe this is controversial, but I actually think it's a bigger mistake to pretend you're better than you are. You know, if you're really suffering, if you have a weakness and it's crushing you, you can use a little bit of darkness to get you into a place where you have something to stand on. You know what I mean? If you really are above it, you are at heroic levels of emotional control and world understanding. But if you're not and you tell yourself you are, and so you don't do anything, that's just going to make you more resentful. If you got to use a little bit of power, you know, if you got to use a little bit of money, go for it. But then the question is sort of like, what happens when the scales start to shift? Once you get out of that hell, are you the one creating the hell for other people? And is it like this endless cycle of revenge? Even if you believe in revenge, or even if you believe in tit for tat, I think a question that is kind of weird that emerges from that is what's the statute of limitations on it? You know, if someone has wronged you in a certain way, does that give you license to harm them in the same way or worse, perpetually with no end? I think there are some people who would say yes to that. Uh oh. A meteor hitter? Samurai no medama o kanza shite tsuite shitsume sase ta no de. Sono hofuk to shite ume wa shibari agerare. Oh, what the hell? Nari mo atai na katta kute ni tori tate agaru no ka! Nami mo hotoge mo minna koroste aru! And him too. Sketara mata shoukai shimasu no de, ano, o kane no ho. Trying to click payment, even though he lost an eye. Does on show up? Yeah. Oh no, the madam. Oh, it's not it was not just him. <laughs> He's bugging out. Sounds very familiar. Envy. How did he merge with his sister, though? Not that I really want to know. Oof. Simple but effective. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty clear that becoming a demon is... Just a metaphor for the darkness, right? It doesn't even really need Muzan. Although I guess Muzan is sort of just like the ultimate symbol of it. Counter to Tanjiro. Maybe the origin of evil in a sense. Yeah, I mean, this definitely makes him a lot more understandable. It's not how that works. So it wasn't even Muzan? Oh, 
I guess life also counts as something material in this scale. Ume. Yeah, in a very sad way. That's not his fault. He kind of pulled her down because he needed her. Or if she didn't stab him in the eye. Yeah, I have a feeling that's what they're going for. That's really painful. That's a pretty epically sympathetic backstory. In this show, I kind of wish they gave it to us first, before the, the fight. I feel like that would add a little bit of something to it. It's definitely not heaven. I don't think there's an exit. Oh, is this some weird, like, supernatural afterlife redemption? He can make up for his sins in the afterlife? Something great about that, actually. At least they get a second chance at this reconciliation and apology. Oh, but it's the opposite, it turns out. That was just his guilt talking. The big move. The best thing she could give him right now is understanding. Well, that's her, her taking responsibility too. <laughs> they walk up into the flames. That's epic. I mean, they got closure. What a rough day, huh? <laughs> Going to hell. Dying, all that stuff. <laughs> and then they became sparkles. I think two things would be true at once there. Like, I think the key thing there was not whether or not he actually was responsible for his sister's demise logistically, but him coming to that realization and shedding a light on some of the darkness he'd been carrying for a long time. That's probably going to be the case with a lot of these things. He actually was doing a great thing for his sister and really taking care of her. Obviously really loved her, but there were other things in there as well, like his own personal needs and his own fear and hatred of the world and desire for self-validation through her. So as a character, it was just important for him to have that kind of reflection, especially in, in light of this whole thing with him and her about blaming the world for everything. Again, being the opposite of what Tanjiro does. It would appear they did. Only five more upper demons left, and then Michael Jackson. That's a huge deal, no? It's unbelievably huge deal. And you showed up at the end after everything's over? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The Hashiro should just roll in packs, you know what I mean? Gee, what'll I ever do with my life without the Hashira? Sex. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hashira was his side hustle anyway. Gee, I wonder why. No thanks. Yeah, we also got an upper-ranked demon on our side now, by the way. Right? Yeah, that's the reaction I wanted. Hell yeah. Maybe she can heal his poison, or whatever he's got going on. It's probably demon-related, no? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is huge. Yeah, but not only for the good. Yeah. It's sort of a double-edged sword, though. He's gonna be afraid, but more aware, less arrogant. I like the energy, but <laughs> they defeated one. Are they rela oh, they're related? A hint of danger for the next season. Oh, it's you! Amazingly, I was sure you were gonna die. <laughs> All that focus on your, your past. I really deserve a flashy welcome for this. <laughs> and the music, the intro music, very fitting here. Ah oh, man, this is huge. It's such a big deal for them. Obviously having survived it, but just the relief at having finally gotten something good. Finally having something that made it seem worth it. All the pain they've experienced, the people they've lost. It's such a perfect way to end the season considering how the first arc went. More than any other show that I can remember, I see this show talked about in arcs, you know, instead of seasons. But no, I think the two arcs are, are very important as sort of like a, a body of work that is the season. The two halves of a whole. Did not need this image again. <laughs> Doesn't this feel like a triumph, though? We can actually take a breath and celebrate. Who's first? <laughs> Sorry. We don't need to pick an order. The end. 
So season two sort of blew me away. For me, it was 10 times more enjoyable than season one, just on so many levels. I mean, I think the most obvious thing to talk about that I hear the most about the show, which is correct, is that the animation is just out of this world. And it was actually great in season one, but there were a couple of sequences in, in this season, in this arc specifically, I think peaking with the previous episode that I didn't know was possible. It's sort of on this bizarre level beyond my comprehension. But I think more importantly for me and just my personal taste is the fact that I think we started getting a little deeper into the themes and who the characters are and what the stakes are for them, what it all kind of means. There's a much bigger significance to the characters I'm realizing than just like, hey, this is a great guy. You know, not that that's bad. I'm starting to get a much more concrete sense of what the life stakes are for the for the characters and who they are. It was great to see some of the reflection the characters did in the beginning of season two. I really love Rogoku, obviously, as this beautiful figure of strength and hope and power that kind of lit a light in the darkness for all of them that lasted until this very, this very episode. The question of what is winning, you know, this is winning. Rogoku won. He died, but he didn't lose. Tengen, as cool as he was, didn't resonate resonate with me as much on a emotional level, save for a couple moments, I think. My feeling about him was mostly just hitting sort of heights of awesomeness in his his greatest sequences, like in the previous episode. I actually was reading a comment about him and his wives that gave him some extra depth, and I think it would have been a good opportunity for the show to explore that a little bit more. But, you know, then again, there's a lot to do in a limited time. And another thing I loved about this was, it's not just that you have these characters. You know, it's not just that you have Tanjiro and Inusuke and Zenitsu. They actually feel like they're brothers now. They went on this journey together. They were training together. They experienced tragedy together. And then that sort of culminated with them inspiring each other and coming together to do what was just this unbelievable, poignant and sweet moment of them defeating the, the demons. And I think there are some parts of the show still and some parts of this fight that are kind of like, okay, you got to suspend his belief. In his game moved his heart, but it sort of doesn't matter because the details of the plot are not as important to me as are the kind of thematic underpinnings and where the inspiration comes from and, and does it feel real. And one of the things that feels the most real to me is their resoluteness in doing what is right and taking responsibility for their world based on the things they've seen and the experiences they've had together. That feels good to me, even if it maybe sounds simple to say out loud. So overall, really fun season that exceeded my expectations. They've set a really high bar for themselves and also have raised the stakes for the next season. So it'll be very, very cool to see how that, that plays out. But that is the end of it for now. I will see you next time for the Q&A and then we will start the next show, which pretty sure is going to be Jujutsu Kaisen.